Today I want to speak about a very, very special sicha, uh, talk of the Rebbe. Um, and this was on Parshas Emor. Now, this is a very, very famous talk of the Rebbe, where the Rebbe like describes what is redemption. Now, we're all, you know, it's a very interesting thing because like the Rebbe says that uh, by nature, and it's a very true thing, I've met many, 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 many secular Jews, and I have never met a single, maybe one, just one out of out of literally over 10,000 people, that, that even people that are atheists, they don't believe in Jews, they don't believe in anything. But I never met more than, let's call it one, that didn't believe in Mashiach. Because if you tell a Jew, Mashiach is coming, and they're secular, all they'll sell you is what's taking him so long. <laughs> So you don't believe a guy, you don't believe in the time, you know, all these things. But Mashiach, the only question is, why is he not here already? So the Rebbe actually says that Mashiach is innately within the soul of a Jew. So that means like we, we sense, we have an innate sense that something is wrong. The world is not the way it's meant to be. Now, it's very, very interesting because everything that occurs, you know, the one, this is, if I can call it my vart, I don't know, if I, I think it's based on Siddha, so I think it's correct, but there's one constant, if you want to know the truth, the truth, MS is constant, you were telling me MS is many times in the Torah, it's the signet ring of God is MS, truth. So in life, there's one constant. And what's the constant? The constant is, as the Rebbe never tired to say, and one of the things that, if I can say, who am I to say it, but one of the things that I love about the Rebbe is that the Rebbe really came from almost a scientific approach to Judaism, very objective. Meaning, as one very great man, he, I had the privilege of, of learning under him a little bit, and he was one of the geniuses of the last generation, Rabbi Hirschsprung, and a photographic memory, uh, great man. And he said that there's some, Jew, many movements do this, in fact, that they'll find the movement, and then they'll find the verse in the Torah that makes the movement true, right? There's 30,000 branches of a certain religion, I don't want to say what, and I'm sure they're all proving it from verses of the Bible, right? And Islam has who knows how many different branches, and everybody's got a verse to prove them. And you could do the same thing even within Orthodox Judaism. There's a verse, and there's a, there's a medrash for anything. <laughs> you name it, you can find it, right? You do gematrias, you can find a verse for either thing. Yeah, you want to prove to learn Torah all day, to live in it. Whatever you want to prove, you can prove. He said, but the Rebbe did the opposite. The Rebbe looked at Torah and extrapolated from Torah how you're meant to live life. And that's a very, very important thing. And I, I have a friend, he's a Rosh Hashim, a very great genius, Rabbi Noah Magner. And he says, this is really the hallmark of the tzaddik of the generation. In other words, the tzaddik of the generation, Yehuda, the base David, they're not coming from a perspective. Oh, I, I you know, this is who we are, and now we're gonna, now we're gonna verify our identity. No, the question is, what is Emes? In a certain sense, this was his part. I don't know if it's true, but I'll say it anyway because there's some value to it. He says that's the difference between Yehuda and Yosef. Right? At the end of the day, the people that become the kings, the leaders of the Jewish people come from Yehud and not from Yosef. Now, if you think about Yehud and Yosef, one looks like a bit of a gangster, and the other is Tzadik Elion. He's a big Tzadik. He like, never does anything wrong, no matter what he believes in God. He's like the perfect the perfect Tzadik. And the other guy is more more on the... Like and in fact, it goes even deeper than that. If you look at Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, we know that Yaakov is called the Chir Sheba Avis. He's the best. You look at Yaakov's life, you don't see anything remarkable, to be perfectly frank. He's like, he lives a very, he's like a religious Jew of today, you know? He, but the Baal Shem Tov says that uh, Yaakov looked at the path of Abraham. And he said, okay, there's, there's something more here. Because Abraham, at the end of the day, gave birth to a Yishmo. And then he looked at the path of Yitzchak. And Yitzchak is Gevura, it's the strictness. One is the love, one is the strictness. He says there's something more. And he came to the conclusion of Tiferes. And Tiferes is a very, very simple, unique way. And Tiferes, quite simply, means be a normal human being. 
I um, I was in, I, uh, there's a lady in Kansas City, I was a rabbi in Kansas City for a while, so she was, I don't remember exactly, 104, 107, she was with her witch, she was a very nice, sweet woman, so I asked her, I love asking older people, like, what's your message in life? The guy's gone through 90 years, 100 years, you know, I met this guy, he was actually, gave me, he was like a bit of a taxi driver, he gave me a ride, he was a religious Jew in New York. He had survived the Holocaust, whatever. So I said, what's the, what's the message? He says, never give up. Right? These, a line like that from a guy that went through that is priceless. So I asked this lady, she's like 104, nice sweet person. So what's your message? She said, be normal. <laughs> be normal. To be, it says, Label Wolf told me that it says in Kabbalah, before Mashiach will come, you'll have to use your inner, the wisdom in your inner heart to remain sane. So we are in this time that basically sanity is is a is a precious commodity, right? As George Orwell said, you know, when telling the truth in a time of universal deceit is a great act of courage, basically. So what's going on? I mean, it should be so obvious, and yet that's the whole thing. The Yitzhahara doesn't really have anything to sell. So what does he do? He takes a mountain and he makes, sorry, he takes a mohill and he makes a mountain. He takes something stupid, a stupid desire here or what, makes a whole story out of it. And before you know it, everybody, a billion people are running after something that literally doesn't exist. Um, so getting back to the topic at hand, we're talking about redemption. We all know that there's something that is missing in this world. And this is the Rebbe's Torah, where the Rebbe explained what is redemption. I'm sure you've heard the Torah already. The Hebrew word for redemption is goyla. Gimel, vav, lamet, hey. Sorry, exile, goyla. And the Hebrew word for, for, for how much, what's the gematria of goyla? You probably would be able to do that. <laughs> I'll make it. Gimel, vav is nine. Lamet is 30. Hey is, is five, so 35. And nine is 44. No, 35 and... 39. 44. 44. Okay, 44. Thank you. So, and if you add one Aleph, it becomes 45. One, one, one difference, think about the difference of the number of 44 and 45. It's not a very big difference. And yet, it's the entire difference between exile and redemption, one number. Mm. And this is a very, very important number, number one. In fact, without number one, there are no other numbers that exist. So I like to tell the young people, we have a lot of young people that come here, and you've got to like shock them into a reality because you'll have two minutes for somebody that has like no exposure. <laughs> so one of, the, one of my uh, little Vartoras is I say, imagine you're on a ship. You have everything you want, everything. You know, today you have ships that have luxury cruise liners. In fact, they even have a ship that these billionaires go on because if you're on the ship for six months a year, then you don't live on land, so you don't have to pay taxes. <laughs> you can imagine what that ship has. That ship has uh, amenities that you'll never see in your life. Baby. So there's only one problem. Imagine your ship has no directions. It's not going anywhere. So this is the problem, is that you see that if you just have a direction, that Aleph, the direction, changes everything. And this is really the problem of life today. Baruch Hashem, in many Western societies, we are living much, much better lives than ever before. And yet, the issue is that the... Um, the issue is that people don't have a sense of why they're living. Raison d'etre. And if you don't know, if you don't have a why, then everything becomes a burden. If you have a why, you know why you're married, then you're happy to be married. But if you don't have a why, there's a lot of work that goes into this project. It's very <laughs> difficult to sustain something, even life itself. Unfortunately, we have a lot of kids committing suicide in certain age brackets in America, suicide has become the number one leading cause of death, which is a horrific thing, a time that people should have everything. So what's the issue? So apart from the fact that there's some, there's, there's I, I call it uh, some reverse racism going on, and I think that people aren't giving, given the self-esteem that you're good enough, and okay, yeah, but at least in America the idea was freedom. At least in freedom you're free to choose something, but now there are all these crazy ideologies. But at the end of the day, a person needs to know 
that there is, they matter, that there's a reason why they exist. I couldn't believe it. C teen, which is the Chabad thing to bring teens together close to Judaism. They had they had a whole their whole convention, like the theme of the convention is you matter. Now, when in human history did you have to tell somebody you matter? What? I don't matter. I mean, what, what do you mean I don't? Matter? You have to convince, and people are telling them themselves they matter. So what's going on? So you have a world in which the truth is that people are being used. Somebody once told me this line. He said, God made the world to love people and use things. But a lot of times we get the thing reversed. So what is it? What is a, What does Google want from you? Google wants your eyeballs. What, so you have all these companies and all these things that people are interacting with, but they have no love for the individual. It's just a company. They just, they have, they, it's an exchange. I want something from you. And, and, and so people are engaged in this reality that really isn't there for them. The reality, it seems like it's a useful tool, but if you had all the tools, all the, let's say, people like to build, you had all the hammers and the nails, it still can't give you love because it's not about you. It's just a tool that you're using to build something. So if you have a reason to build and you have something deeper, then it makes sense. A lot of people today, let's say the Rebbe speaks about it, like somebody gets older, so they like uh, find a hobby, you know? In other words, what are you saying? You're saying that in Yiddish guide, in Judaism, and this is the fundamental oh, truth of Judaism, there's a Russian writer who wrote this, and he bright Russian writers, he said, there is no life affirming, you know, like self-esteem building religion like then Judaism. If you actually think about Judaism, it begins with a complaint of God to man. He's like, Ayeka, what's going on? In other words, when you really identify with somebody, you, you don't even, like, he doesn't say Avram Avinu, he says Lech Lecha, you know, go. In other words, you already have that relationship. A person once came to the Lubavitch Rebbe, and the Rebbe actually asked this person to come to him, Gordon Zacks, there's a video on it. He says, when the Rebbe, when he came into the Rebbe, the Rebbe says to him, whatever I see, you've taken well care of your body and your mind, like, what's with spirituality? In other words, the Rebbe's starting point was that he loved this person so much. That he would give his life for this person. I don't have to say hello to somebody that I love that much. I start off with what's going on. How can we work? There? How can I make you a better person? How can we work on this world together? So Hashem's starting point with us is of infinite value, right? Hashem gives us a world, and He says, "He get, like the starting point of God is He put you in the Garden of Eden, and He wants you just to to do good and wants you to fix it, and make it better." So His starting point is like already the highest level of love and kindness is possible to exist. Now, for that to be actualized, like we said the other day, a person has to have free choice. Why? Because ultimately, if you don't choose, if I tell two people get married to each other, they could be the best two partners in the world. But if they didn't choose each other, then there will be a certain um, feeling that maybe I was forced into this and so that's why in general, you, have, you, have married, you have married children, yeah. You have married children. You, you let them choose it. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, right, right. But okay, so people go out, but at the end of the day, they're given the space to choose it because this way they have to feel like this was something I wanted. In general, if, you, if people are pressured into anything, it could be the best thing in the world for them, but they'll still feel a sense of resentment. And this is really what Mashiach really is all about. The world was born with Mashiach. Mashiach was here when God made the world. Right? What's The world was a bit uh, confusing. And the spirit of Hashem covered. Now, is a very important word. Merachafetz means it pulsated. al of Yerachif. With the eagle, it hovers, it's pulsating. And the act of pulsation is a very important style. Because if you understand pulsation, you understand everything. Because that's the idea of Ratzai Vishuk. Hashem is pulsating the world into existence. The, the Magad speaks a lot about it. I have a translation if you're interested. I'm sure it's the original, but um, I, call, I think it's called the Magad's Inspirational Wisdom. Um, let me see if I can find it. Actually, whatever, you can go onto Amazon, you could see the book, but Magad speaks about it a lot, that 
that, that it's called Moti Vlay Moti, that the energy of Hashem kind of reaches, for example, if you want to make a magic trick, you like, I don't know, you, I don't know, let's, let's say you're breathing fire, right? But you can't keep on breathing fire, you'll burn the room up. So yeah, it has to be in a second, right? So everything has to pulsate, mm. come and go, come and go. If you keep it there, then the keli would burst. So it's like it, it, the, the yesh comes out of ayin, but the moment it comes into existence is the moment the ayin kind of goes back into its existence because otherwise the yesh couldn't be a separate existence. So this, so Hashem, it's, it's unfathomable. Hashem is, is pulsating the universe into existence every, I mean, on a level of, of, of speed. And it's just, there's no way the human mind can begin to understand what is going on. But, and this is a very important but, there are two types of time in life. There's physical time and there's spiritual time. What's the difference between physical time and spiritual time? So physical time, you have a bit of a, like a math background. So physical time really is a very interesting question if it actually exists, you know. Because based on Einstein's equations, physical time doesn't really exist. It's kind of relative to speed. So it's a question. In, that's why he says that it's all relative, meaning it's more of an experience. So we'll get to that in a second. But the Rebbe says there is such a thing as physical time. And the physical time is the time, which is really brilliant to say this, time is past, present, and future. So it's the time between the atom coming in and out of existence. That's the constant. The atom comes in and out of existence at a constant rate, and that's real time. But to say that 24 hours is 24 hours, really in a way it's relative to where you are and the speed you're going and things like that. So, you know, when they asked Einstein to explain the theory of relativity, we all know he famously said, if you have a, a nice conversation, an hour feels like a minute, and if you're sitting on a hot stove, a minute feels like an hour. That's relative time, right? Or as they say, one... One strand of hair on a head is too little, and one strand of hair in a soup is too much. But it's relative. In other words, what he was saying is that it's an experience. And this is really what quantum physics has figured out, that life is really an experience. And that really gets much more into the spiritual realm, that in effect, what are we doing? We are experiencing ourselves. So we are the experiencer. A soul is something that can experience an experience. And Hashem is the one that makes the experiences. Now, we don't really realize that he makes the experiences. I don't walk. In fact, it says it's a very, I was privileged. I was in uh, Shul and Crown Heights, and I just randomly opened this little Kabbalah book, and I saw a very interesting thing. Whenever you look, you see a lie. Why? Because I'm looking at this thing, and I see something that exists, but it doesn't really exist. It's really just Hashem. Right? But I see that. So whenever you look, that's part of the idea, the Alter Rebbe says this, to see as a chayim, re'e, see life, see that what you're seeing really has behind it Hashem. So he says in Uman, you have to train yourself to see that this whole world is Hashem. The Rebbe Shab speaks about it, when you can train yourself, bring yourself to that consciousness that the universe is Hashem, then you're in a very um, special level that you're, because you're not, feeling separate. That's the whole idea of Enoid Mulvada. I think it's chapter 33 in Tanya. He speaks about that's the way to have joy in life is to know Enoid Mulvada is all Hashem. So this is a very, 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 very important concept. The concept to always feel that we're actually within Hashem. Now, at the same time, we're individuals and we have to grow. So the point is that we are all here to grow. And to grow, you have to go through ups and downs. The Alter Rebbe has a beautiful teaching. He says that your ups and downs are Hashem's music. Musical music goes up and down. So when we go up and down, this is the music of Hashem. It's like, oh, wow, look at the soul. He's going up. He's going down. He's going through a whole journey. You're playing God's music. And it's true because the Baal Shem Tov says that when we are in Shemayim, not when we're in Shemayim, I'm sorry. In Shemayim, what does Hashem brag about? He brags about us couple of Jews getting together, learning some Tyra, right? You could be doing, you could be playing ball now. He says, no, this is what Hashem brags about. We are the things, because Hashem appreciates that we had a Yitzhahara, and we chose the Yitzhah type. And this is Mashiach. What is Mashiach, ultimately? Ultimately, Mashiach 
is choosing the right choice. That is a is a redemption. And the other thing about Mashiach, I sort of spoke about this the other day, is that Mashiach is an infinite reality. In other words, what is Mashiach? Mashiach is when a person enters. What does it mean that the spirit of Hashem hovered, pulsated? When man was made, he was given a task in this world and everything you really need to know, right? Gracious is a simon, it's a story, it's lessons for us. So when man was made, he just had to do one thing and everything would have been fine. What did he have to do? He had to listen. Just listen, right? You're made, you're a soldier in God's army and a soldier has one job. Just listen. Don't don't figure out how to win the war. We got generals for that. Don't be smarter than your officer. Really, the main training that you give a soldier is not how to shoot. It's how to listen. That's exactly what soldiers are trained to do, how to follow orders. And that's our job. Our job is to follow orders. And it's not to say that we don't have a freedom. Well, no, we really do have freedom. You really cannot listen. And you can really mess it up. Or you can really lessen, listen and really fix it up. So it's an amazing, when you begin to understand what's going on, it's extraordinary. Hashem has put the keys of the future in your hand. Had Adam Harishan listened, he would have brought redemption to the world. The mitzvah was still Shabbos, there would have been no death. He didn't listen. And so therefore, and this is a very, very, very critical message for today. Because today, we're not really dealing with the real problems of yesterday. You know, the Rebbe says, that our ancestors had to deal with, to, to live or die. Our challenge is, do I eat the cupcake or do I not eat the cupcake? <laughs> you know, what I mean? we have a different set of challenges. Now, in our little world, that cupcake is very, very, very precious to us. <laughs> it's very difficult not to eat the cupcake. And, you know, it looks so good and the frosting is so nice. And and that cupcake has many forms. It's another foolish video or a, you know, ridiculous, you know, uh, news anchor. It's, it has different forms, this cupcake, but it's just cupcakes. And our job is to exercise the power of our choice to do the will of Hashem. And if we can have, and the rabbi speaks about this, if we can, I, I asked this guy, a young man today, I saw him, I, you know, I, I said to him, I saw him earlier with a girl a while ago, so he said, no, are you getting married? I was trying to encourage him. He says, getting married? Married to who? Yeah, I want to get married to Hashem. I said, don't worry, Hashem, you're already married to. That's already who you are. And Hashem wants you to get married to a woman, you know. In other words, to understand, you don't, Hashem is not a force outside of you. Hashem is your own soul. He is your essence. It's, now it's about taking your animal soul and your godly soul and making a marriage between the two of them, bringing the two of them together. Being able to express the godliness that is your essence in your dynamic, in your reality. And this is the Tanya yesterday. I just want to see, I don't want this to cut out on me, so I just want to see where the thing is up to. This is the Tanya of yesterday, where yesterday's Tanya, um, he speaks about that basically the Bainani, the average person sees himself as his animal soul, right? A person doesn't know really in a way who they think they are. You take for granted who you are. The first thing that Avraham Avinu was told is, I want you to have a new style of living. And this was really Mashiach. In other words, if you want to become all that you can be, like Uncle Sam desires, then you need to leave all that you think you are limited in. Because a person would say, if you describe yourself you're describing yourself based on your identity as a country or your religion or your family, all these different things. My personality. I love, you know, I remember when I was in England, I was a counselor in a camp. <laughs> and one of the kids, I asked one of the kids to do something. So he says, I couldn't be bothered. I was like, what? <laughs> I couldn't. Like in America, when you're, I don't know. Uh, authority figure says to do something. You're not like a prince. I couldn't be bothered like a ten-year-old kid. <laughs> so the Bani, if you, the Bani has this, 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 this knowledge of who it is, 
and it couldn't be bothered, you know? <laughs> so, but the thing is that who we see ourselves is not necessarily who we really are. Because who are we really is our Nisham, is the spark of Hashem, that is the, the real soul. So our potential is Hashem, which is infinite. In other words, a human being the, is, is really based on his perception of reality, is based on his mind, and his mind is limited. So you can never think, even when you look at somebody like the Rebbe, and you look at what he's the output, it's still almost impossible to think that this was beyond human intelligence. This was a divine kind of intelligence. Because you think, how could, you know, a guy spoke and he makes sense. It must be, he's got a good mind. No, this is like beyond, I was telling you before about the rabbi that I got smicha from. So he was from the greatest uh, minds, if you want to say it. And he said that if a person were to work 17 hours a day in any field, whether it's Gemara, Halacha, Hasidus, so it would be impossible for them to reach the Chidushim, the innovation of the Rebbe's innovation. He says this was a divine intelligence. I asked the guy, he worked nine years on a book where he collected everything the Rebbe said about the different, like Abayi Verava, all the different Sadiqim. So I said, okay, so what's your takeaway message? Nine years in a book. So the takeaway message, we haven't begun to study the Torah of the Rebbe. So anybody that really appreciates, like Evan Yisrael, real genius, they looked at the Rebbe, they realized in front of him they were nothing. So this is something of a, of a new level, a new category. Okay, so this is the summary. The summary is that what is Mashiach? Mashiach is where you enter into a new way of life. A way of life where you know that you were chosen by Hashem. You have a purpose, and you, whether you like it or not, you're on His journey. You're in His world. This world is not a random place. This world, I say, history is His story, and you have a starring role in it. Once a person understands this, then they take themselves out of that existential angst. They take themselves out of, why am I here? What do you mean, why are you here? You were chosen by the Creator of the universe to be part of His universe. You have a role in the universe. So then the only question becomes, okay, what is my role? It's not a question of why am I here, is my life meaningful, is it not? It's only a question of what is the meaning of my life, what am I meant to be do? Of course, that's what we have Torah Mitzvahs for, we have a Mashpi, everybody has to have a personal Hasidic mentor, which helps guide you. This is the purpose of existence. And when each and every person understands this, and the last Sikh of the Rebbe, we're coming up to it by Yaakov, the Rebbe says that we all have this mitzvah, Aninya Basi Lasham Shaskani, I'm here to serve Hashem, but also to tell everybody else. We need a world where people understand that they're not a body in this world. They are a spiritual being, they're like an angel sent to the world. And once you understand that, there are basically no more issues, because all of our issues come from do I matter? Do I not matter? But once you understand that, of course you matter. You're, the whole world was made for your mission. You're here for a purpose. And whether you do it or not really, really matters. It's, it's going to be because each thing we do brings redemption. And remember, redemption is an infinite process. Redemption is not something, this is the, one of the big mistakes we make, is we look at redemption like, oh, Mashiach will come, and that's it. It's all good now, right? Lots of cupcakes. No. Mashiach is going to come, and now Yelchu Mechayel Achoyel Yiral of the Kim Betzim will continuously progress, will continuously go forward, continuously grow. So Mashiach is the state of infinite growth. And when each and every one of us realizes that we are in the state of infinite growth, really whether you like it or not, because that's the state. Now the shirt doesn't decide when to go into the washing machine. The washing machine starts to wash the shirt. So certainly if we're here in Tzfat, if we reach this point, we've gone through a lot of growth in our lives. I think to get to Tzfat, it's a little bit like Gan Eden. First you have to go through Gehenim. <laughs> so Tzfat is a very uh, sacred place. And we, Baruch Hashem, have this great schus of, of infinite growth. And, and infinity, there are no questions anymore. Because infinity is running the show. The world is a place which is constantly getting better. And this was also one of the big things that Rebbe, people are like always talking about Mashiach. Oh, it's so bad Mashiach will come. The Rebbe was saying the opposite. Rebbe was saying it's so good Mashiach has already begun to come. You know, the Jews are free for the first time in thousands of years. We have Eretz Yisrael. The Rebbe used the words Kibbutz Goliath when the Jews were let out of Russia. So the beginning of the ingathering of exile, is that not a small thing? For thousands of years, we're waiting for the land, the beginning. The Rebbe says Mashiach is here. The Rebbe has obviously been given the message. And that 
means the you know all we're waiting for is kind of the base of Middash, the resurrection. But we're like we're in the final moments of the greatest story of, of human history. So this is the kind of consciousness that we have to live with—a very positive consciousness. Hmm. I, I heard that they asked Mendel Futafas uh, which way is correct, the Meshachist or not. So he said a very deep word. He said the way of Simcha. Because everything has to be Simcha. The Geula is also here. I saw that Rebbe says the reason he's so into Simcha is for Geula. We have to be constantly in Geula, in a Geula mindset that it's good. And all of the, I would say, without a shadow of a doubt, 99% of the negative news it's all a lie. It's just one big lie. Okay, there's a 1% that's true. Things do need to get better. But 99%, and if you look at the statistics, never before in human history did people have better. I mean, you're living double as long as 100 years ago, the more peacefully, with more prosperity, with less, you know, infant mortality, with better education. Certainly when you look at Chassidus and Eretz Yisrael and the Jew, it's like this is already the times of Mashiach. So a person just has to kind of beat beat the darkness by adding the light. That is, of course, our mission, always to add in the light, always doing more. And that's the Aleph, that's the Hashem, the infinity in the finite. And once we put that Aleph, once we put that infinity into the finite, then we become infinite, like the, the, the infinite. The Chayim of the 